All right, today we're going to be making a Gretzel cell, or what's also known as a disensitized solar cell. It'll look something like this when we're finished, and these are very cheap and easy to make with mostly homemade products. So we need to start with a piece of conductive glass, which is one side is layered with coated with ITO and it looks much like regular glass. You have a few options here as far as variables go because we have some few different types of glass. We have a thick eighth inch glass, a thinner sixteenth inch glass, and we also have a ITO covered plastic that is flexible and can be cut to the same size as your glass slide. So that's one variable that you could adjust looking at what material backing works the best for the, this application. Another variable you could change would be the size at this current time. You could go with a smaller size. You can go with a larger size glass. Or again, you can use this plastic material to cut it to a size that is a known square area. And if you're going to go based off square area, make sure to do something that's easy calculatable like square centimeters. So step one is first to tape down, determine which side of the glass is conductive by using your multimeter. So we set our multimeter to resistance and touch one side of the glass. If we see the number change, it means that side is conductive. If we try the other side, it doesn't change. So once we figure out which side is conductive, we also want to do the same thing to our other slide that we're going to use later for the other half of the cell. So we we'll, we'll just remember which side it was and put it off to the side and use it again later. Now I want to tape down my slide on two sides which helps control the flow of the titanium dioxide. If you're basing your variable off of area, you're going to need to mark out on your slide where to put the tape so that you know it's one square centimeter to be a little bit more precise. And you can tape down all four sides if you're going to do it based on area. This just stops the slide from moving around and keeps the titanium dioxide on the slide. The next step is to apply the titanium dioxide solution. This has already been pre-mixed when we bought, purchased it from the company. And it comes in a 100% solution. We can also dilute the titanium dioxide with an acetone to create a 50% solution or leave it out in a vent hood to reduce it to create a 200% solution, which we'll have done previous to class. So you, when you come in, if that's going to be your variable, that work will already be done. So, we have, so we've put a, one to two drops of the titanium dioxide on the slide and we can kind of smear it around a little bit to make sure it covers all the surfaces. Next, we'll use a stir stick to squeegee the slide so that the coat is a little bit smoother. Make sure to keep the top on the titanium dioxide. To squeegee, you want something with a nice, sharp, flat edge. So, a biology plastic or paper, a wooden stir stick or a, a, a non-coated microscope slide will work as well. This way it keeps a nice even coat. And so we'll set that aside and let it dry for about 10 minutes before we start the baking process. If you're going to look at using different kinds of coating as a variable, now would be a time to prepare different slides with other types of coating. For example, zinc oxide or some other oxides that might work in this case. You could also you look at molecular thickness 
of the titanium dioxide as applied as a different type of coating. So putting in a thin coat, letting it dry for 10 minutes, and then applying another very thin coat and letting it dry for 10 minutes, and then another very thin coat and letting it dry for 10 minutes. That way we can build up the molecular structure so when it's baked, it has a thicker coat. Just don't put it on so thick that when it, it'll crack as it dries. So you need to keep each layer thin as you build it. So we're going to move the slide to the side so that we can work in a clean area. It works well doing this on a manila folder or something slightly rigid so you can pick it up and move the materials later without disrupting the area too much. Our next step will be to make the other side of the cell that has carbon on it. There's a few different ways you can put carbon onto the cell. A simple method is using a pencil on the side and just coloring the cell. Make sure you color from multiple directions to fill in all the gaps. This puts down a somewhat thin layer of carbon because if I turn it over, I can see the other side. Those of you that are artists may want to try using other types of charcoal-based pencils and that as a variable. So you could try different levels of graphite or different types of pencils as your variable and just track which ones you're using for, to go back and do research on. Another way to apply, apply graphite or a carbon base would be to make a slurry with lock car the carbon used in locks or graphite and then bake that onto the slide much like we did with the titanium dioxide. You can easily buy that type of graphite at a hobby store. A common and very simple way to do it is also to just use the yellow end of a flame and that's what I'll use here. So this is the conductive side of my slide. And so I'm going to use a lighter and just gently run the slide over top of the flame and you can see as I do it it will turn black. Do this in a safe environment where there's good ventilation. This is a way to get a really good carbon layer but you've got to be very careful because it rubs off very easily whereas the pencil does not rub off very easily. And the slide will be very hot, so be very careful not to touch it and let it cool off. So we've talked about a few different ways to apply carbon as a variable. We'll currently put this slide to the side so it doesn't burn anybody. Now that the titanium dioxide is pretty much dry on the slide, you can either apply another layer or you, that slide needs to be baked. To bake that slide, we'll carefully take the tape off and not rub any of the dioxide off and then put it on a hot plate and heat it up. It can be heated at 450 degrees for about 30 minutes. It should turn brown and then back to white around the end of the 30 minutes. Here we have one heating on the hot plate now. You can see it's already turned brown, so it'll need to heat for a little while longer to turn back to white. So we've had the slide baking for a while, and we can see it's turned back to it's turning back to white. It just has a little bit longer to go. So that was the end of the day one procedures, and we looked at a number of different variables. Day two, we can look at types of dye, length of time exposure to dye dilutions of the dye and t types of light.